We're going to do something a little bit different today. I'm not going to really lecture, but we're use that lecture format just to get us going. So we're going to talk about the Great Barrier Reef and coral bleaching. So can I assume we've all entered? Okay, I only have 11 people in the Nearpod so far, and we're going to need it actually for our lesson today. So um, like I said, it's not a true lecture, but we're using that lecture format just to, to get us through the activity. So I will need everybody to log on to the live lesson with me. There's a student version um, for people who don't make it to the Zoom. I have a student paced one in the Google world, um, but I want you hanging out with me here. But let's just go through this part. And then um, the second piece, like we're gonna launch onto another website. So I can just give you that website when we launch, okay? Okay, so, um, so today, and like when I ask questions, maybe you guys that can't log on, maybe you could just throw them in the chat for me. So um, today we're gonna talk about coral bleaching. And like in 2005, half of our Caribbean coral reefs were lost due to um, coral bleaching here in the United States. We're probably most familiar with coral when we talk about the Great Barrier Reef of Australia. So um, they've had five mass bleaching events. So I'm gonna be asking you like, what is bleaching? Um, but what's most alarming is that they've had three in the last five years. So that's a big deal. So um, this, this year alone in August, a quarter of the Great Barrier Reef suffered severe bleaching. So you can see this is what the coral might look like, and this is what you might expect it to look like when it's bleached, right? It turns white. So I'm going to be asking you what causes the bleaching. Does anybody know what type of organism a coral is? Remember our kingdoms? What kingdom would it belong to? Is it a plant, an animal, a fungus, a protist? bacteria? What do you think? Hard to say. So looking at the last three. Okay. Yes, it is. Thank you, Kate. It is an animal. Things that don't move, we have a hard time, I think, associating with as animals. So, um, so here is the Great Barrier Reef and the red is where we've had severe bleaching. And it's interesting, it seems to be working its way down the continent, right? So we can see in 2016 up here, that looks like half of the coral reef already gone. And then um, continuing down the continent over the year. So this is 2020. So about 60% actually of the coral reefs have been bleached. So my question for you is, why would Ms. Snug bring up coral bleaching right now? What is causing coral bleaching? So throw an answer in. Those of you who, um, who aren't in the Nearpod, maybe you could throw me a Zoom, I mean, a, a breakout. That way I can write you down and make sure that I know you're here. So what's causing the bleaching? Are we pouring a bunch of bleach in the water, do you think? So we got plastic in the ocean, we got water pollution, maybe the ashes from the fires. That's a good connection because early this year we were talking about the fires in Australia. Good one, temperature changes. That's a good guess. We know we talk about global warming these days. pH is too high, that would be an excellent guess. Um, isn't it because of pollution and oceans becoming more acidic? Okay, so good, 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 yeah. So um, we have pollution, Temperature and acidity seems to be our common threads, which we will find out more as we go. Um, I'm gonna broadcast my video on all devices. Okay, so let's find out what is causing coral bleaching. I'm gonna be asking you more questions as we go. Hi, it's Paul Anderson. And in addition to being some of the most beautiful places on our planet, coral reefs are some of the most biodiverse. They're essentially the rainforests of the ocean. But as the temperatures on our planet continue to increase, corals all around the planet are beginning to bleach. 
Now these are not dead coral yet. Yeah. Let me show you what's going on. If we zoom in to the Great Barrier Reef and we look at a specific coral, here's a group of coral together, and we look zoom in even more, we start to see the individual coral polyps. So coral are tiny animals. They're invertebrates. Um, they're all clones of each other. This is their tentacles on the top. If we look at their anatomy from the side, these would be those same tentacles. They have a mouth that serves as an anus, but they're anchored to rock. This limestone or calcium carbonate is created by the coral itself. They're laying down calcium carbonate and the reef continues to grow over time. But if we zoom in even more and look at the coral polyps from above, we find that the color is not coming from the coral. It's coming from these little dots, which are algae, symbiodinium. These are symbiotic dinoflagellates that are found in the ocean. Sometimes they're called zoaxanthellae or zooks, um, but they live symbiotically inside the cells of the coral. Let me show you how they get there. This is a cross section of one of the tentacles of the coral. So this would be an open space in the middle of the coral. And then they have two, la two layers of double cells. And so the symbiodinium are taken in like any food supply. They move into the space and then they're just taken into the cell itself through phagocytosis. Now they're not broken down, but they live inside the cell itself. These would be the nuclei and these are going to be the symbiotic algae. Um, what are they doing for the cell? What are they doing for the coral? Well, they're doing photosynthesis. So light comes in and they're using that light and carbon dioxide to make sugar, giving off oxygen, which the cell uses for respiration, giving off more carbon dioxide water, giving off other nutrients that are used by this symbiote. And so they have this symbiotic relationship. 90% of the energy for the coral is coming from these symbiotic algae. Now, what's happening is the temperatures on our planet are increasing due to increases in the amount of carbon dioxide, we're seeing increases in temperature. And what scientists think is going on is that it's damaging the photosystems within this algae. So these weird structures right here are these massive chloroplasts and inside there, photosystem two is being damaged. And so this algae is functionally dead. Well, now all those advantages of photosynthesis and this symbiotic relationship are gone. And so what's the coral do? It kicks those algae out. And as it expels those algae, uh, we can see the actual color of the coral. The algae are gone and the coral has now been bleached. Now, are the coral dead at this point? No, they're metabolically alive. But since 90% of the energy is coming from those algae, they're not gonna do well over time. And if the temperature levels continue to stay high, those corals are eventually going to die. Now, corals are getting hit from above and below. So ocean acidification, as we decrease the pH in the oceans, we're gobbling up the carbonate in the ocean, which they use to make their calcium carbonate shells. And so the coral are being devastated by changes in temperature and changes in the uh, chemistry of the ocean. If we look for ground zero of this conflict between humans and fossil fuels and coral reefs, we could look to Queensland, Australia. And so there's a proposal for a massive coal mine to be built in Queensland. It's the Carmichael Coal Mine. Um, most of the funding is coming from India. They're going to create a bunch of coal that will move to India to produce, produce energy there. Um, it's going to produce a bunch of jobs for Queenslanders. But if you look right next to that, we have the Great Barrier Marine Park. And so ironically, as we create jobs in Queensland, we're going to warm the planet through increasing carbon dioxide, and we're going to destroy that barrier reef. Um, the barrier reef is being devastated right now by coral bleaching. And so it's going to be a conflict over time. If the temperatures continue to increase, the coral reefs are going to continue to bleach and eventually die. I wanted to thank a viewer, Rebecca Blake. She put this forward as an idea for a video. If you want me to make a video that you're interested in, leave it in the comments down below or send it to me. Okay. So first of all, before I continue on about the coral bleaching, he talked about the algae living symbiotically um, with the coral. Where else have we talked about algae living symbiotically with an organism in this chapter? You can shout it out if you like. Do you remember day one? Can you give me day one? What did we model with? The sea slug. All right, that was fun. Okay, um, so here's our next question. Now that you know more, some of you did not have an answer, for example. 14% um, of us didn't have an answer. 
what is causing the coral bleaching? You might even um, extend your answer if you were already one who gave me some environmental effects. Now you might be able to get behind the environment scientifically what's causing the bleaching. So I'll give you a minute to throw in some answers. Everybody should have an answer this time, unless you tuned out and didn't watch the video. Okay, so we got the high temperatures, the temperatures increasing, the pH, the planet's heating up. So what was causing the color of the, of the um, coral in the first place? So like the distant cause perhaps is our temperature and pH and stress on the coral in particular, but our more direct cause, why are they losing their color? Because they're kicking out those symbionts, right? They're kicking out the little organisms that contain the chloroplast in the first place, right? So I want you to make a model. That's the next thing. So the, the coral are becoming bleached and you have the idea that it's temperature or pH or some kind of an environmental stress. And then that environmental stress causes them to expel the, the, the algae that's living within them, right? So that's how they're losing their color. So we're just gonna take a minute to draw out our models I know it's hard to draw on our computer sometimes, but draw a model and show me how your understanding, your understanding of how coral becomes bleached. Good starts, I see. Mm, I, I really like pages. Oh, you guys, you make some nice looking coral, Jillian. This is beautiful. I could tell right away that that was coral. Caitlin's got some nice coral going. Max added some algae. Ooh, Kaylin changing up the colors. Oh, I love it. Got a before and after on Jack's, nice. Jillian's got the algae all being expelled. That looks awesome. Oh my gosh, Alex, that's a sweet drawing. Do you have like a pin that you're working with? Emma Daly, are you with us, hon? I like the arrows, Paige is using arrows. We talked about arrows are often used in scientific models. Oh, I see lots of arrows now. Good job, good job. Jack, do you have a pen that you work with? A stylus of any sort? Oh my gosh, you're really good. Mine would be a big blob, I get it. I like that Paige has multicolors. So does Caitlin and Mac. Alyssa's got before and after colors, good. Lee has arrows going in and arrows going out. So I think he's showing the environmental stresses going in and the algae coming out, nice job. So I gave you a little bit more time on this because I figured an actual draw takes a bit of time. So we got about two minutes left. If y'all happen to submit before that, we'll go ahead and move on. Mac, I like your use of arrows and your use of labeling or uh, your, yeah, arrows and labeling. Good addition, Alyssa's added some arrows. Lee's adding some details with text labeling. Nice job. Ooh, that's super cool, Paige. I, it's like I can barely see your coral in the second, the after version. Neato burrito. We're down to the minute. Brody's adding arrows. You guys, lots of good arrow or good models. I wish you could see everybody's models. I don't think I have the sharing option. I'm gonna maybe grab some of these pictures after the fact. 20 seconds. These are awesome, you guys. I um I thought I would be able to share my faves, but I guess I, I can't, but there's lots of good ones. What's this? Oh, that would be the slides. Oh, you guys, I'm these are worth publishing. They're so good. Okay. So basically you had your healthy coral with the algae that was living symbiotically. So notice the chloroplast, a connection. Notice the chloroplast within the algae, right? And then um, we're spitting those things out. So that's due to different 
different stresses. We talk about warm temperatures, but it's also happened with extremely cold temperatures. And then also we have the bleaching as the final product, right? So now let's make our connection to our topic of the current time. How does this relate to photosynthesis? Let's get into this. I'll look in the chat box for my friends who aren't online. I know you didn't get to, to work in that five minute period. So this would be a good time for you guys to pipe up, earn your keep, so to speak. How does this relate to photosynthesis? Coral bleaching, photosynthesis. Oh, there's a SpongeBob. Have you seen that one? Oh, I didn't know I said I have to, I don't want to ever admit these. Okay. So algae has chloroplast. Photosynthesis has something to do with chloroplast. Algae produces food via photosynthesis, thus the symbiotic relationship. The coral gets its food that way, sure. If it can't photosynthesize, is it gonna be able to get food? Definitely involving chloroplast. The algae is gonna do the photosynthesis on behalf of the corals. So a lot like the, um, remember we started this unit with the sea slug, right? And the sea slug had algae living within it. And then um, because the algae was photosynthesizing, that sea slug could live for months without food. Now we have algae living with coral, producing the food for the coral. And due to the stress, it's kicking the chloroplast out. So now it can't have its food anymore. So this is where we're breaking out. And I know that normally I would like release you at this point, but I'm gonna keep you in here because I wanna get it done so you guys can leave for break and not have this hanging over your head, okay? So I'm gonna create a breakout room and you're going to investigate coral bleaching and photosynthesis at your own pace. This is a gizmo. Um, the next slide will allow you to launch the gizmo, um, but you can also, I think the link is in Google Classroom. So you can maybe, um, but there's not a worksheet separate from this. It's embedded within the case. So along the way, you're going to create a hypothesis. It's gonna give you three different things that you can suggest what's actually causing it. Okay, so now we're getting into the science behind it. And then based on your hypothesis, you're then gonna run an experiment and you'll collect data. And it's all gonna get recorded within the gizmo for you, okay? And then um, you need to report your conclusion. So it gives you a place to write that paragraph, okay? So that is what we are going to do next.